Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. Yes, it's been a little while since I've put a video out. Uh, I ended up, unfortunately, pretty sick for a bit. I managed to uh, pick up a thing called sepsis, which is an infection of your blood. So that had me down and out. But fortunate for me, even though we are in a very small rural area, the hospital here is just amazing. I was cared for by a team of six doctors and some truly amazing uh, nurses and nursing staff that took care of me in the hospital. So very much on the mend. Going to be uh, a few weeks before I've really got my strength back. But the big thing for me is I'm back home. And we're doing videos again. So today we've got two things that we're going to look at. I talked about this uh, earlier, the, uh, the Guard Pro solar panel. So this is the SP350 solar panel. Now we've had one out on the A60 for a little while. So we're going to go out and have a look at it and see what its charge level is at. So let's have a look at what's in the box here with this. So in the box, we've got our instruction manual and the solar cell. Now this particular solar cell has got the battery pack built right into the back of it. So one of the things you wanna do before you take this out there and put it into use is to fully charge it. Now you can do that just by putting it out in the sun, but the other option, which is what I do, is you can plug it in and charge it. Now there is an indicator right here that you can see has turned red and that's saying that it is taking a charge. So basically it's picking a charge up off of my light. So when it is fully charged, like if you're charging it in your house off the cable, that light will turn green and that will tell you, yeah, it's fully charged and ready to go. Then take it out and put it to use for the first time. Now when it's out there, there is a set of lights along the bottom here that will tell you what the charge level is. Now there's a little black button over here that you can push and you can see those LEDs light up. And as you can see here, it is showing that it's a full charge. So that's how you check it when it's out on the trail kind of thing. So the other thing that's nice with this uh, solar panel is there's three settings on it. It's got a six, nine, and 12 volt setting. And to accommodate your different voltages, you've got two different plugs that you can use on this uh, solar panel. Now the other thing that it comes with is a mount. Now I'm not crazy about these mounts. So we'll put it together here so you see how it goes together. So you've got this nut that slips over top here and threads on. Now when you thread that up tight, that stops this from rotating around or anything like that. And then this, and this is the part I don't like, this threads up to the back of your solar panel. It's just a standard quarter inch screw that you'll see on all cameras or most cameras and tripods and that type of thing. What I don't like about it is that this is very small and very hard to get a hold of. Now I tried this on, an, on one of my cameras uh, that it came with and it just didn't work properly. But it does work okay for the solar panel because the solar panel is really not that heavy. But something for Guard Pro, you need to make this a little bigger, a little easier to get a hold of. Because you can't really tighten it up very well at all because that is just so hard to get a hold of. So we'll straighten this out and I'll show you what I mean.
So when you're out in the field, this little thing here can be very tough to get a hold of and to get it tight enough. It's such a teeny little knurl. When you try to tighten it up, you practically hurt your fingers doing it. But as I say, it is sufficient for the solar panel. So what we're going to do is take this panel out and set it up on one of my other cameras and we're going to have a look at the solar panel that has been out there for well over a month now. All right, let's pack up our gear and head out. So because I was laid up for so long, I'm way behind on videos that I normally watch on different channels uh, like Grampy's Workshop, um, Tucker and I, RCAF Polar Express, um, and Maintenance with Mike. It's just a very short list of the ones that I really enjoy following and uh, watching their videos. Now, one of the things that I saw uh, on Maintenance with Mike just the other day, now that I'm starting to uh, go through videos again, was this kind of setup. Now the bears have been very active here at the west side of the property where they're coming across the fence line. Now I'm not a hunter myself, so I don't have a rifle or anything like that, but I saw this setup that Mike had, which I thought was a great idea. So I've basically copied that, Mike. Thank you for the idea. So I've got my can of bear spray here and I've got an air horn uh, to give them a loud blast if that becomes necessary. And I'm going to keep that with me all the time right now when I'm out in the bush until they are actually uh, in bed for the winter. All right, let's get moving. All right, folks, we are out where that, uh, where my original solar panel is sitting. We'll get across here and go have a look. Now this is the camera that was assaulted by a bear the last time. It actually looks fine. Everything is still in place. So yeah, it's in good shape. Now let's pop this cover out and have a look and see just what our charge is at here. So as I suspected, it is showing a full charge, which is good. All right, so that's working well. We'll see how it does through the winter. So let's do a quick swap out on the chip on this, and then we're gonna go install our uh, second solar panel. All right, folks, we've come down to the E9 camera. You can see it here on the tree. Now, I've come right down to it because I've, uh, this is the camera where we're going to put the other solar cell. So we might as well just come right down. Now, what we're going to do is have a uh, closer look at the app that you can access this camera through. So let's get the app started up and we'll have a look at that. All right, folks, just because of lighting and that kind of thing, I decided it would be a heck of a lot easier just to bring the uh, camera back with me and we'll have a look at the app from here. So I've got my E9 camera. It's the wireless camera. So we're going to connect to it and we'll go through the steps as to how to download all your videos off of the camera and what to do then. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so we're going to open up the app here. Now you need to be within about 50 feet for this to work because you are using uh, a combination of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I've got everything open. There's my camera there. So I'm gonna click on connect. 
And what it's doing now is it's turning uh, its Bluetooth on and through Bluetooth, it's gonna connect to the camera and wake the camera up. Now I just saw a red flash uh, on the camera itself and you can see that it's connecting there. So it's asking to join the uh, Wi-Fi that is now turned on. So we're gonna join the Wi-Fi And we are going to join the network. And then you can see it's gone green up here. I'm going to hit start. And I'm now actually in the network. So down in the bottom right, there is uh, a gallery so I'm gonna hit that and this is now showing all of the videos that are on the camera so pretty good collection that's good that means there's been something going on down there so I am going to touch and hold for about three seconds one video and you can see there's a little check mark uh, where you can select one video at a time so i'm going to go select all so they're all there so now at the bottom i can delete these or i can upload them to somewhere or i can save them to the phone so when you're out on the field the easiest thing to do is just to tap the save button so there's 63 videos on there that it's going to download and that's going to take a few minutes it will probably be with that many videos i'm going to say it'll be about uh, 10 minutes to download all of those so we'll pause here and i'll get back to you and give you the time for how long it took to uh, get these onto the cell phone All right, so we've got everything downloaded and it looks like there was one that failed. So I'll go back and pick that up. So for now, we're going to hit OK. And so you're not done yet. You don't want to walk away from your camera at this point in time. There's the one that failed. I can see it right there. So. So it has indicated to me what has failed. I'm going to download it. And there we go. We've got all of the videos off of the camera and on to my cell phone. Now what I want to do is check to make sure that they are actually there. So I'm going to go to my photos section and yes, they're there. Okay, we'll go back to the camera. So you've got to remember that what you're looking at here is what's on the camera at this point in time. Now to clear things off of the camera, I'm gonna go through the same little process here. Hold that for about two seconds. And you can see there's the little select spot for all of them. I'm gonna go select all. And then down at the bottom where the trash can is, I'm gonna hit the trash can. And it's asking me if I want to delete the files, and I'm going to say OK. So you want to make sure that you get to the point that when you're looking at the gallery, this is blank. And remember your 
deleting these files off the camera, not your cell phone. So you need to be connected to the camera. This needs to be in green. All right, so that completes that process. Now, one of the things I'm going to look at here, you can adjust all your settings. One of the things that you might want to think about as it's cooler is to look at your PIR sensitivity. When it's nice and warm through the summer and that type of thing, the motion sensors are not as sensitive because of the heat around it. So that's when you want to have this set to high. But as the weather gets cooler, like around now, you might want to think about setting it to medium. That way you're not going to pick up every rustle of the leaves and that type of thing. Now this camera is in a pretty well protected area. There's not a lot of wind down there and that type of thing. So there isn't a lot of rustling around. So, but even still, it is picking up a few blank shots where there's just nothing there. So that's going to Go to medium and that will be the only thing that I want to change on that camera. And then we'll take it back out and we'll be good to go. Well, the one other thing you want to you want to do before you walk away, just to help preserve battery life, you don't want to leave the camera continuing to look for a Wi-Fi connection to your app. So when you're done all of this, select disconnect. Now the uh, Wi-Fi system in the camera is shut down and it's just going to help preserve the batteries that little bit more. So I hope you found that interesting, uh, a little better look at the solar panel and how the app works. So what we were looking at was the wireless version of the app, not the cell phone version. It's pretty slick. I really like the way it works. With that camera now set up down at the bottom of the gully where it is and having a uh, solar panel hooked up to it, I really shouldn't have to actually make contact with that camera very often. But we'll see how the solar panel does through the winter. And if you are interested in the uh, Guard Pro equipment, there is a link that you can use in the description that will take you to their website. And there is also a promo code that you can use for anything on their site that you buy that will give you a nice little break on the price. So that's going to be it for today's video, folks. I'm going to be getting back out to put the E9 back in place, make a couple of adjustments on the other cameras. And this video will be followed by a trail camera video with the uh, highlights for October. So stay tuned for that. So thanks very much for watching. Remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time.